you announced the CEWA 2020 vision back in April this year. Um, can you just please give us an overview of how this strategy is going uh, and what we can expect to see in the coming years? Well, a vision means that you have a mental creation of the future. And the way how we see the future is very bright future. We are very optimistic, very focused. And the, the vision built on, on a certain circumstances, which is uh, within the, the organization and, out the organi and outside the organization. The energy sector is running uh, through a very tough uh, challenge globally, it's not only locally. So w without uh, being an, an, an authentic and the way you provide the services and the product, and without engaging the community with you, is going to be a failure. It's going to be a tough challenge for every executive. Um, just last month, you installed a solar streetlight project in a number of the city's areas. Um, are there any other upcoming smart projects that we can inspect in the lead up to 2020? Uh, and also, do you have any other solar specific projects in the pipeline? We started the, this project about 14 months back. And the first six months, it was very low, low profile because it was during the, what they call the pilot stage, if you would, if I were. We wanted to see how good what the Ali added to the society. And that has come after a little more than a year before that intensive research. Because here we have very tough environment, especially the, we were planning to install, that was the plan to be installed in a very remote area where have a lot of wind, a lot of sand. So we did a lot of research and we landed to those type of uh, panels where they could really um, resist the tough environment. And we started to, to introduce them to the remote area, especially the farms, or the area where you know accessibility is needed for the people. You see, the, our way of thinking of solar is not building a solar power plant. Uh, for us, this is uh, probably premature to, to talk about it at this stage. Uh, we are more toward engaging the society. Engagement is the rooftop, and the rooftop we're talking about the SMEs, the small and mid-sized scales industries. I'm not talking about the houses now. I'm not talking about the feed-in also, because I want to tell the small companies, you could reduce your utility bill by 20 to 30 percent. Our objective is 30 percent by doing basic thing as, you know, putting a, a, a rough tube, uh, a, a rooftop uh, installation, and that's not too costly. We are leading by example. Now we're, we have uh, four warehouses under construction at the moment, and we're planning to use the, 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 the rooftop uh, solar panel on them just to, to lead by example, so you can, people could see in reality that we are using, and so why don't you use it? There's a good example here. A key part of CEWA's 2020 vision is to make Sharjah one of the smartest cities in the world. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about how you plan to achieve this through sustainable development? Well, SD, or the sustainable development, is focusing on three pillars, the economy, the social, and the environment. And we believe that CIWA is, is running through that uh, cycle now. So we feel that we are in the sustainability cycle, if you would, because we develop the human, we do contribute to the economy, and we do contribute to the environment by really protecting the envir environment of using the solar panel, renewable method, and uh, energy, if you would, and diversifying the energy in general. So we're trying to do that. One of the things we could really touch base here is the LNG usage. And LNG is, has become a, a phenomenon now. So this is the talk, the talk of the town. Wherever you, you travel, whether Europe or states, everywhere, that's LNG, LNG. And because of the crash of the oil prices, countries found out that LNG has got a lot of benefits. Besides, you know, the, it's, it's, it's cheap enough. Uh, it's, it has an environmental impact also. Second, the use of the electrical car. I mean, this is something new that we are doing. We're just building 100% uh, solar uh, powered uh, chargers for the electrical cars, and we're already in securing two cars for us. And again, just to tell the society here, you need to diversify your fuel system even at the personal level. So that's part of the, of the So when you think about smart city, you're thinking is not the, the sustainable in general, the, the pillars, but how we make people's life easy. UAE's Innovation Week is currently underway uh, and CEWA have been showcasing how the Internet of Things can be used to save energy through micromanagement. How important a role do you think the Internet of Things will play in energy uh, conservation and what plans do you have in place to capitalise on this growing technology? The Internet has got so much benefits that you could really communicate like the smart, me smart meters for example to give an ex how we're going to benefit out of it. The smart meters now Earlier, the physically, the, 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 you know, the meter reader would go physically and open up the meter case and take the reading and, 
and there might be even a human error here and taking the reading sometimes difficult to take the reading because the environment here tough environment 50 degrees or sometimes heavy rain so it's difficult now through the internet of things we installed about 12,000 smart meters now those smart meters are communicating to the control room so you could read exactly the consumption and the precise reading at each minute of the day or the night you need so that's because the internet you were able to do so, so it's going to, to, to add a big benefit. Uh, 15, 20 years before, people will, will, will they have to fly from country to another to fix a piece of machine or cook it. Now the same machine, while it is on the net, they can fix it. So this is the internet of things. This is how things has been advancing. So we feel that it is part of our day to day. Uh, do you predict a growth in demand over the next five years in terms of energy? Uh, and if so, how does CEWA plan to tackle that? Uh, where do you see the growth coming from um, and what challenges do you predict? Well, geographically, Sharjah is very unique in her location. So Sharjah has become like, if you would, the, the connection among the, 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 the Emirates here. And the beauty of Sharjah, a lot of uh, people love to, to stay and live in Sharjah. A lot of, a lot of industries, especially the SMEs, we have 48% almost of the whole UAE industries are based in Sharjah. So that really gives the importance of charge, if you would, in a way. So we have a lot of commercial buildings coming up. We have a lot of uh, residential. We have a lot of industries coming up. So we have to feed all the, the three. So it's difficult to give away to one and forget about the two. Because in Sharjah, we are looking at ourselves as a sustained uh, city. So you have to, you know, to, to please everyone. You know, when it comes to the commercial and uh, industries, they need more energy, more power. So a bit sophisticated. So you have to be uh, detailed oriented. You have to sit with them face to face. How much exactly they, they, you know, they're looking for. And by the way or the experience we have, we can reduce even the load further by sitting with their engineers and try to convince them using the latest technologies as basic as the LED lights, for example. What is the current energy mix in Sharjah? And how is this changing as new technologies become available? Well. Uh, we, uh, one of the strategies we have is continuous optimization of our assets. And uh, the assets, mainly the, the power generation side, they love gas a lot. Yeah. So you have to keep feeding with the gas as much as you can, better than the liquid. So the strategy is focusing again on the, in the, on the natural gas. And we have secured a long-term gas agreement with uh, Gas Dolphin lately. And the second is we're working with the Charge Petroleum Council to use LNG. And uh, the Petroleum Council is planning to bring what's called the FSRUs, the floating uh, LNG vessels. So that's hopefully, if it comes, that will help us to diversify. Uh, plus, we have the, the, the environmental friendly uh, diesel fuel, if you would, in a way, with the lowest sulfur content. Why we're diversifying? Because we're experiencing 2 to 5% growth rate. I mean, looking at that, the trend area for the last uh, five years, it did varies, and you know, the more the economy doing good, the more you know you see the demand and the energy side, obviously. So we're experiencing from two to five percent. So, but we are always ready for the for the future.